today some additional thoughts on mastering single pilot operations and our responsibility to ourselves and others to conduct each flight safely. From the National Business Aviation Association, this is Flight Plan. This week's podcast is brought to you by Whiting Aviation Park. Ready to grow your business in Santa Rosa County, Florida. I'm Rob Finfrock with your trusted source for business aviation news. As with other events in 2020, COVID-19 unfortunately prevented us from gathering in Orlando this year for NBAA's annual Business Aviation Convention and Exhibition. However, the matter of business aviation safety is one too important to skip by or wait to address until next year. That is why the association moved its annual single pilot safety stand down, which usually takes place right before the convention, online as part of NBAA's inaugural virtual safety week. Building on the theme A Quest for Mastery, the two day stand down examined the pursuit of excellence across all facets of single pilot operations. I'm pleased to welcome now two of the presenters from that event, Chris Provencio and Todd Hodis, to drill down on a few of the many notable takeaways from the stand down. Chris serves as Director of Flight Safety and Security for Textron Aviation, and Todd is Flight Operations Manager and Chief Pilot for Polymer Resources. Todd, let's get started with the question that framed the recent single pilot safety stand down. How does one define excellence in single pilot operations? Well, I think it starts with not having an accident or incident or infraction to, for starters. But beyond that, I think it's really having some sort of a code of ethics to fly by or uh, a moral code and, and holding yourself accountable to it, whether that's having yourself operating procedures, standard operating procedures, but, you know, related to oneself, perhaps, you know, a tracking system to assess those systems that you have in place to mitigate the errors and risks. So it's beyond just the obvious of having a clean record as a single pilot, but it goes into professionalism and, and having a real system set up to ensure that you're safe as a single pilot. And Chris, how would you define excellence? Yeah, Todd mentioned professionalism, and really it's a higher level than just meeting the standard, right? So you really have to aim to be that to professional, regardless of what type of airplane you're flying. And along with professionalism is really flight discipline. You know, in my mind, it's lack of focus, lack of being in the moment, and lack of discipline. And I think you really attain that professionalism through being prepared. And so there's a lot of different facets of, of uh, being prepared, whether it be for that flight or, or if you take a look at it in the training realm over a longer period of time. But yeah, those three things, I think, uh, come to mind. Professionalism, a high degree of discipline, and being prepared. And speaking of being prepared, one of the stand-down sessions examined how the single pilot of a Cessna Citation responded to a very frightening situation, a sudden stall indication immediately after takeoff in low IMC. That erroneous warning was later determined to have been caused by an iced over angle of attack vane, and it's the kind of incident we may never experience in our flying careers. But it's also something pilots need to know how to address without panicking or overreacting. So Chris, how can pilots fight complacency so that we are ready to respond correctly to an incident like that? Well, I mentioned being prepared, but uh, I also mentioned uh, being in the moment. So you have to really lend uh, yourself to what you're doing at that time. And, you know, preparation for a flight happens not the day of the flight, but obviously it, it's probably a few days prior as you're checking the weather, as you're becoming more familiar with the, the mission and maybe your passengers and, and those type of things. So uh, while you can't prepare for every situation, there is a higher degree of focus so that you can have the highest degree of situation awareness so that if something does happen, you can deal with it appropriately. And, and it just goes to what I like to uh, say, be ahead of the airplane, you know, have that situation awareness around you that you're ahead of the airplane at all times. And again, uh, going back to the earlier question regarding professionalism, if you have that high understanding of your aircraft and, and of your mission, then something that may come about that you haven't expected is easier to deal with at that time. I think Chris kind of hit the nail on the head there. You know, I mean, as a single pilot, you are the team. You know, you're you're the weatherman, you're the dispatch. I think I mentioned, you know, in the single pilot safety standout, in some cases you're making the call whether you're, you're fit to fly or not. You know, you're really a, a one-man show. And so staying in the game is, is an absolute must. You don't have the luxury of a second crew member. And so stepping out of it, even for a couple of minutes, can really lead pilot down the rabbit hole. 
On that same token, Chris mentioned staying ahead, and I think that's crucial for single pod operation. I mean, if you're not thinking, in some cases, again, as Chris mentioned, you know, days ahead, but in some cases, if you're not thinking 50 or 150, 300 miles ahead of the airplane, and you're not preparing for that next stage or next two stages, you know, you're, you're already behind. And as a single pilot, I think once you're behind the ball, it's very hard to, to catch up. And it's very hard to catch those those risks that are insidious and can really lead into a poor situation. Another session covered the importance of flying a stable approach to landing. We've seen far too many accidents occur in this phase of flight, Todd. What are some of the factors that can hinder our ability to execute a stable approach? You know, as we discussed in one of the case studies, weather absolutely plays a factor. I hate to ever say a standard day or even a standard operating procedure, because what really defines standard? I mean, every day of flying is is different. And I think that's how you have to approach every flight. But to answer the question, I think weather is a huge factor. Let's let's take ice adhesion, for an example, and how that can change, you know, what would be a standard approach into a faster approach speed, a different configuration. How does that look outside the window? How is that affecting your landing distance? Maybe that eliminates the airport you're trying to get to altogether. And then you can bring in professionalism and, you know, are you forcing yourself to get in or are you holding yourself to a standard and saying that's not the field anymore? So definitely weather is is an absolute factor. I think operationally, too, we see a lot of incidents that occur with overshoots. Well, is air traffic control asking you to maintain, you know, 180 knots to five miles out? How is that changing configuration? So I think there's a lot of these factors that can um, really conspire and, and hinder a pilot's ability to maintain a standard approach. But all these things can be mitigated to conform into a standard as long as there's a plan and and procedures in place. Chris, what factors inside the cockpit might affect a pilot's ability to fly a stable approach? Well, especially if you're flying single pilot, right? You may be single pilot, but you may have somebody in that right seat. So making sure that you have a good uh, briefing between you and that right seater is crucial. Just to make sure that In critical times, whether it be weather or whether it be an ATC delay or whether it be some other factor that now you're a little bit distracted, that you have some sort of standardization within that cockpit. In addition to that, if you have any passengers in the back, to brief them, to make sure that you have a good brief before you take off. And and maybe you have uh, some sort of hand signal that, hey, below 10,000 feet or below 5,000 feet, whatever your criteria is that, hey, now you're totally focused on flying the airplane. So to limit any kind of distractions or or eliminate them 100%, because at that time, close into the field, whether you're shooting the approach by yourself or if you're being vectored around by ATC, there's a lot of situations that can create an unstable scenario. But if you have that pre-briefing done and, and your passengers know the expectations of what you demand of them, then I think the likelihood of being distracted and leading into a uh, unstable approach are minimized. And then the other thing is going back to the uh, the preparation too. So just like uh, Todd alluded to, I mean, just having uh, those SOPs ingrained in your mind of, you know, what is the definition of a, of a stabilized approach so that you're not having to figure it out as you are shooting that approach and, and you have those gates, right? Whether it be a thousand feet or 500 feet, you know what your criteria is, you know what the limits are, you know what your targets are. And then I think the final thing is is to make sure that when you hit those areas that exceed your limits is that you're decisive. Uh, You know, you're making that decision if it leads to a go around that there's no question in your mind that that's what you're going to do. We'll have more insights from the recent single pilot safety stand down in just a moment. But first, a word from our sponsor, Whiting Aviation Park in Santa Rosa County, Florida. Ready to grow your business? Whiting Aviation Park can help you take off. Here, you can develop up to 200 acres for manufacturing, maintenance, repair, or overhaul operations adjacent to NAS Whiting Field with access to its 6,000 foot runway. You'll be able to reach high and go far from Santa Rosa County, Florida, home to a large, skilled, military-trained workforce. If you're serious about growing your business, learn more about the incentives waiting for you at whitingaviationpark.com. We're back now with Todd Hodes and Chris Provencio and our discussion of takeaways from NBAA's 2020 Single Pilot Safety Stand Down held online in early October. Chris, what are some recommendations and best practices you encourage to help single pilots improve their safety focus? Yeah, so, you know, flying single pilot, I think uh, Todd said it earlier, is that you're the team, 
right? So you have to be prepared. So uh, whether it's you having a system to review your emergency procedures, your memory items, your limitations, whether you belong to type clubs to further uh, your knowledge of what's going on or understanding what the uh, top safety focus areas are or what the top 10 is on, on the NTSB list, you become a student or you always remain a student, really, of what it takes to be a professional pilot. I lead an organization that does uh, a lot of accident investigations. And, and for me, it's a great way to know what other folks are doing wrong so that I don't make the same mistakes. So as a single pilot, you have to keep challenging yourself to be better. I think I'm aligned with Chris. It's along the lines of talking and, and listening within the community, you know, exploring the different forums and groups and meetings, really taking a, a proactive stance to to further yourself. Because again, you know, you are that team and, and adhering to that kind of personal code of ethics. You know, I, I think that every pilot has to be professional, but if you're the only one on board, it's it's imperative, it's crucial, you know. So Having that moral code to follow, I think, is, is very important. And, um, and having the systems in place to track data, if you can track your own data, there's a lot of great tools out there to do that now and to um, evaluate. But it's really just to stay focused and keep the learning curve moving forward. And Todd, you just said something again that struck me earlier in our conversation as well. You stated that a commitment to safety isn't only a professional obligation or a responsibility to us and our passengers, but that it's a moral requirement. Can you explain a bit about your thinking and framing it that way? Well, I think that it has to become ingrained in in one's fiber. It's similar to passion in a sense. You know, I I think if you are a single pilot, you're taking on all the additional responsibilities of essentially multiple people. And I think that you have to follow some sort of a internal code to ensure safety of of yourself and your, your passengers. And in some ways, it's hard to explain. It almost has to be innate in a sense. But, but I do think it's something, especially if it's written down, that can be followed. And, and it's beyond just what's required, as Chris alluded to, beyond just the standard. It's, it's an ingrained, almost personality trait, if you will, to maintain that focus. Chris, as emphasized throughout the single pilot safety stand down, the journey to mastery is an ongoing, never ending process. So what are some takeaways that single pilots should perhaps carry with them as they look toward their next flight? I think to sum it up, it's the learning never stops. And so there's always a quest uh, for continuous improvement. I've been flying for almost 40 years now, but I also realize that any day that uh, there's something out there that could bite me. And so there's always things to get better at. There's uh, things to learn, whether it's new avionics, whether it's uh, new regulations, whether it's a new aircraft or maybe something that you haven't flown in a while. And so it's that desire to maintain a high level of uh, understanding of the airplanes that you fly and also the things that it takes to complete a mission successfully. You're the accountable executive of that airplane. You're the pilot in command and that should mean something. And if you're not taking that seriously, you ought to either be stepping up your game or, or do something different. And it doesn't really matter what kind of airplane you're flying. It could be a piston, a twin piston, a turboprop or a jet. They all have different things that are easy or harder but they all present different challenges. I think, and it's something we're working hard in our company, but I think it can apply to whether you're a single pilot, you know, one airplane, uh, one pilot operation is to really have an overall safety management system. And when some people hear that word or that acronym, they uh, think of it as a uh, overwhelming monster, really, that they can't achieve. But it it really is simple. And you can do it, like I said, with a, a one pilot, one airplane op. It could be you understand your policy. What is your policy? And you write that down, even though you're a smaller group, right? And and then you have a system to identify what those hazards are before they become an incident. So you have some sort of of, uh, risk mitigation and and risk identification. And then the next step is, is really to check yourself. You know, just like you go to recurrent training or you have annual uh, requirements to make sure that you are ready to fly, make sure that the risk assurance is taken care of so that those hazardous and potential incidents are being addressed on a regular basis, whether you look at it quarterly or whether you look at safety trends. 
or other data analysis from different safety groups like AOPA or MBAA. And then the other thing is just promoting and communicating, whether it be to uh, family members, whether it be to other pilots in your flight department. Uh, And so that safety management system, and, and I know in our group, it starts at the top. It's ingrained so that your safety culture is really part of you know, what we talked about, it becomes an innate feature of your organization, just like the moral code of a pilot. So I think uh, the safety management system, and I know that it's spread into other areas of aviation, is something that really ought to be looked at and really monitored on a frequent basis. Todd, what would you like pilots to take away from the single pilot safety stand down and from our conversation today? You know, Chris mentioned all the really great takeaways. I, I think it's fun, too. You know, I mean, I think part of flying that makes it interesting is that you are always learning. In fact, I think if you truly master flying, that's, that may be the day you want to hang up your hat because, you know, if you're not open to new ideas and new techniques, I think that's that's what really keeps flying interesting. And so pursuing that, that quest for excellence. And if you're doing that, you're, you're probably, you know, under that professionalism umbrella because you're you're striving for additional training. You're trying to fly how you train. You know, you're doing all the things that are that are necessary to be a safe airman. And again, it, ha- having fun with it, maybe doing a, a tailwheel endorsement or a seaplane rating. I mean, all, all of these skills are transferable to flying, you know, whatever airplane you you fly on a regular basis. So the journey to mastery, it's it's definitely a marathon. It it, it should never stop. You can only get better and it should be fun. NBAA's 2020 Single Pilot Safety Stand Down was part of the association's Virtual Safety Week that took place October 5th through 9th. All sessions from that event are available at nbaa.org forward slash safety week. And that's the latest from the National Business Aviation Association. Thanks again to our sponsor, Whiting Aviation Park. And remember, you can subscribe to all Flight Plan episodes at Apple Podcasts in the App Store, wherever you find your favorite podcasts, including by asking Alexa or another connected device, or download them from nbaa.org. I'm Rob Finfrock. Thanks for listening, and please join us next week for a new episode of Flight Plan. Flight Plan.